Welcome back to the rig review and today I want to take a look at the Leo rig. You can find it here and you can see some really nice animation tests already. And as you go forward, you can see it has really nice textures for a cool render. You can do your pose test and there's on the animation test, but you can see it comes with a picker and also a library. I like it that it has the studio library and all those other options. It's already very promising, so check it out. Make sure to check out the Twitter account as well. You get some tips and tricks. Here's one regarding RGB masks for the lighting and rendering. These are Arnold textures. And as you can see here, it is 20% off right now. So grab it while you can before it comes out and it is at the full price. I will, of course, also add it to my Animation Buffet site where you can see a bunch of other rigs that I have either added as a collection or reviewed. Back to the rig, here it is in its full glory. You have to make sure the textures are set up. You can go to General Editors and you can do it to File Path Editor. You also do it manually if you want, but make sure that that is selected so that the textures work. I have anti-aliasing on here, so it's nice and crisp. These are all the controllers there. Now, starting off with the big one here, there's nothing in the channels, but it is there to move around. And you have a smaller one, which I always love, because then you can bring it down to around here. And now you have a different pivot, just in case you want this character to fly around like Superman. And this is your pivot point here. Just pointing that out. I like it. Now, if you do select the small one, you can see a couple options here. A, you got the geotype for norm, temp, and ref. Bend controls, I have them on already. Secondary controls on and off, of course. You have cloth on and on, so I can set this to zero. And here is the character without the cloth. You can see that proxy is on. You can see how it's divided here. You can also say proxy off. So I'm going to leave that at off, actually, and go back to cloth on. And there we go. Let's start with the feet. As always, I don't know why, but that's what I do. You got this here. So you got your controls. Go back here. You can move them around. If you rotate, you can see the knee follows. So you have all of that and you have auto stretch already enabled here. Now you can see this here, stretch on off. So that would turn it off. You have your squash. Let's go back here. So if you do, so if you bring up the leg like this, let's put on squash and you can see what's ha what happens here. You have save volume zero. So if we do, for instance, a pull and you do save volume here, you can see how it changes. Just kind of funny looking. Soft IK length one and two. This is for all that separation. That's for the separate ones here. Of course, you have the roll weight. Let's go back here. So if you go back to the foot here, you have the roll. And you also have the roll weight that you can change here. But you have the classic foot roll, front and back, which is neat here. You got your side roll, the banking, as some rigs call it. Also neat, always good. Then you have a tip pivot. So that is from somewhat kind of the middle. But you also have a toes pivot like that. And you have the space here, of course, that you can change. If you go into these controllers here, you can rotate this up and down like that. There's no other control. Can you scale? You cannot. Can you scale the foot control? You can. Kind of messes up the shoe a little bit. So watch out. There's not a huge amount of remodel flexibility, but not all the rigs have that anyway. Now, I have all those bendies on here. So you can see this here. You can move this around, which is really cool, but that gives you kind of the ankle squashy control feel, which is cool. Now, no scale on this one either. That is that for the feet. Now, Bendy, you can already see here, you have the small amount that you can move here. It's very detailed. Or the bigger one here, which is really neat. All very classic stuff up here. This goes all the way up to the arms. So bring this out here. Spoilers, we're checking out arms already. You got this or you got the big one if you want. Let's go back though, because here we have knees. So if you take the foot, bring it up, bring it down, rotate it that's how the knee will follow you can also take the pull vector here and do that what it also has is the snap yeah yeah because i love this that's so great also on the arms but let's get back to that later let's move up here and then we have the hips you can rotate them like this scaling a little bit like that we also have this here which takes out this little hip bendy you have the bigger one as always you can move out it's almost like the like a hip clavicle <laughs> That, you can move out like this. This is another spine control that you can move like this. And then here, with that little flag, it changes from FK to IK. So you can see here, this is the change for the legs. You can select this controller here, and it does the classic FK and so on. This is, of course, on both sides. Now, we select the root, and then we have root control like this. We can scale it like that. You have gimbal on and off. You have chest inflate. You can see here for the breathing. That's cool. I like this. And you have belly. 
like that. You can do both. And you have this. That's cool. I like it. Moving up here. This is your chest control like that. You can also rotate like this. Same thing here. This is for your more fine-tuned deformation. Can you scale? Yes, you can. And this one, you can't. All right, so there's some, some differences in terms of scaling options. But again, you can continue, you can rotate, and you can also translate if you want. Here's the bigger chest control. So you have it like that, which means that you would rotate and translate forward for this. You can scale just this section. It also has a pivot change. So if I take this and do that, and then I change the pivot, you can see how it changes where it is. is pivoting. That's cool. As the name says here, I'm stating the very obvious here. Then let's go up. You have that here in terms of your clavicle. That's cool. Can you scale? Yes, you can. And I am set in FK. So if you take that arm, you can move it like that. Let me just double check. There you go. You can do like this, but you can also break the arm in all axes and also translate. You can do a bunch of stuff there, which is cool. And I'll show these already because your bamboos in the fine control and bigger controls. Then here, you got your flag, like FK. I'm going to switch this over. And then you get into your classic FK mode, which again, just bring it back. As I said before, you can select the controller here to do this. And also have snap, which is great. And I love it. Let's check out the controls here. So here you have stretch. So if I grab this, you can also turn this off. Of course, you have the save volume. Yes or no. You have the length for both. You have too much here in the undo. You have to squash, you have to roll weight, roll. And here's a very cool feature. If you grab the hand clumsily like I do here, and let's say it's on a table, you have a roll. I like this a lot. That's very cool. You also have a side roll and a pivot and a pivot. And even though it says toes pivot, it's not for toes, but it's cool. I like this. Of course, you have the space switching as well. But that hand roll, I think it's really neat. Now, something that it also has is an IKFK switch. I'm going to blend in a movie that was included in the rig. We have the left FKIK, the right FKIK, as well as the left and right foot. But, you know, as you can see, if you grab this, switch it to one, it doesn't exactly snap to it. So something really cool, if you hold down right click, you have FKIK snapping, which you can see if I do this. It then snaps it to IK and or FK. And you can also mirror. So if I move this up here, I can right click, mirror, boom, boom, there you go. Really super easy, super cool tool. Same works with the feed. Now, if you don't want to do this on the picker, there is another option that you have to be able to do FK IK snapping. And it has to do with the menu mail script that you get in your folder. All you have to do is drag and drop this into your Miocene. I saved it up here as a shelf just in case it doesn't load in automatically. And then what that gives you is it gives you the ability to hold down right click and you have FKI case mirror and flip. And it works just like the picker even better. So right there, boom, snap to IK, boom, snap to FK. Perfect tool. Works with the right hand. Another cool thing is that it also works with your layout control so I can hold down and I can race reset my pose to a T pose so there you go he's reset to a T pose I can also mirror my pose so that's just a quick tutorial on how to get these super cool super powerful scripts in your scene just takes dragging and dropping into Maya thanks so and as you saw that I did the menu import and you can right click on this here you can see FK FK mirror and flip and like they said here which is really cool so let's pretend I do something crazy what is this well, I don't know, let's keep it. Let's keep this and go crazy. And I do this, whatever. I break the rig and whatever it is, right? I can right click on this control and say reset. Bam. Resets the pose. I like this a lot. That's very cool. Let's go up to the head. You got this control where you can move it like this. You can rotate. Can you scale? Yes, you can. You also have a left neck and right neck tension. Not many rigs have this, and I love it. That's really great. Looks like I'm back into proxy. Hold on. It's a reset. Proxy off. There you go. So that's really cool. I wish everybody had that. You got global on off. 
You also have this here, which is really neat. This is your Apple control. So if you want <laughs> Apple control, Adam's Apple here. You can also probably use it for a little bit of swallowing, but that's cool. I like this. Anything where you can deform and kind of change things in terms of your setup, I think that's really great. You have also your bendy options through there. And as you can see here, even with the small ones, you can adjust some stuff here. Can you scale? You cannot scale this one. Can you scale the big one? Yes, you can. Whoa, I oh, swallowed something. Let's go to the bigger controls of the head first. So you got your head here. So you can rotate. You can, of course, translate. Gimbal control up here, rotate order. And you can also scale if you wanted to for a little Funko Pop or bobble head. Let's go to the ears. You have that ear control. There's nothing on earlobes. It's one bigger-ish control, but you can also scale if you want. This control is not just on the side. It's actually this whole thing here. So you can grab this and you can do your line of action for the head and some squashing and stretching. Whoa, that's a different rig right there. <laughs> like an alien. But that's cool. I like it. Speaking of other control, you have this yellow one I can select here. You can grab this and you can see that it takes the bigger part of the upper head. You can also rotate can you scale? Oh, yes, you can. There's this control out here. This is your squash control like that. Then you have this control here, which is not for the jaw. It just grabs the whole thing and you can see what it does. You can do this. You can also scale and you can also rotate again for some different line of action stuff. This is cool here. Grab this one and you have a this is neat. Really like this. Look at how much it deforms here. Yeah, very cool. Big fan of this one. Other than that, in terms of bigger head controls, that is that. So let's go to the eyes. So you got your classic looking around. You can see the eyelids are falling, which is neat. You have a parrot option, yes or no. And you also have just separate eye control here, which also gives you pupil and iris size. Let's go to the bigger controls of the nose here. You can move around like that. You could, of course, translate it around. Can you scale? Yes, you can. And then you have a smaller control here for the nose tip. You also have nostrils. This is not with the shape. You can just translate, but you have an extra tiny one here to do this. There's a bunch of stuff here. So as you get closer, you can see all the little extra details you can have on the lip here. This is a bigger move for the whole mouth control. There's a smaller one that grabs this. You can see how much it deforms also the top and the cheeks compared to this that is separate. That's neat. This will be your jaw control. So let's open that. You can also translate this for an opening. Can you scale? Yes, you can. Let's open that a little bit here. And then you can see you got your mouth corner controls like that. Also gives you a zip. You can see this here, which you can have an extra option here. If you grab the chin, you can see here the zip control here as well. So if I take this and I zip it just a little bit, go back to the jaw, and you can change it here in terms of the up and down. So lots of fine tuning, that's cool. Let's get even closer. So what do we have here? This is from the lower lip, okay, deforms that. We have this one Ooh, that has just this. Look at this, we got that tiny one for this corner. We have this one for another bigger-ish, and the same thing here, right? You got bigger controllers and the extra fine tuning, which is really cool. Let me just quickly open this even more and double check what is going on here on the teeth. Anything here? I see something back here. Yes, so you have your fine tuning of teeth right there. And if I actually keep this on, you can see this here. Let's bring this down so you can move the whole thing. Very cool. And you also have tongue controls. So you have your rotate. And what is this guy in the middle here? Oh, what is that? What is changing? Is that neck? Oh, that's the back of the throat. Look at that. There's a bunch of stuff you can do here. Very cool. See here all the controls for the tongue. You have cheek controls. Move it like that. You got that little one out here. You have a kind of an upper cheeky thing here for your smile. That's great. Then we're getting to more controls here. Fine tuning controls here. Then we're getting to eyes and the lids and all of that look at that that's really cool here you have your lid like this and you have a tiny lid change as well so if your eyeball is here you can grab this and kind of give it that rotation over there you can see how much it follows selecting this on the right 
you have your lash up and down interesting on the lash size and here as well and the depth as well that's interesting that's a new one i haven't seen that before that's cool this is for your lower lid and same thing here depth and what's this one that's the bigger uh bigger shape here super detailed on the eyes i love it eyebrows this must be the bigger one yeah that moves everything it's actually locked to just up and rotate let me see okay you wrote it like this oh interesting with the pivot so that the outer ones are not moving that's cool kind of like that too you have this and you got the tiny one as well so a bunch of controls let me just check the channels nothing there nothing there okay that's cool you have this here to change any type of deformation so if i go in for a furrow you can do changes here that's cool yeah i like it then we have a bunch of hair controls let me just double check okay so this is mostly in the front and let me see all right so that's your fk hair like that i'm just grabbing anything willy nilly here that's your unicorn the last unicorn can you hold on let's go back take this and do norm and this okay separate pieces of geometry if i go one up and hide all right ah, it shows you this just in case you want you know i wonder if that could be interesting texture change too this is for you to paint on your own if you want that character to be bald to not have that but yeah that's cool to see be kind of neat too to have controls this is the next section huh yeah i think if you have already that many controls in the front it'd be kind of neat to control maybe the back a little bit since they are coming out it'd be kind of cool too and overall let's go to the fingers just quick since i just remembered i didn't go through that so this is your fk and then you have your wrist bends so you can rotate that out of course you have these guys to rotate of course you can select them like that and do your rotation of fingers like that of course let me double check what is this one doing this one has rotation order nothing in there but it does the base there more further back and same thing for the thumb of course you can move these can you translate yes you can and like i said before the flag we can change to ik to fk so again if i change this you have those additional controllers here, which are really cool. I really like that hand roll. I think that's a new one. Actually, can you scale? Let me just double check. Yes, you can. You can make those fingers really long if you want to. Lots of modifications. And again, I did a bunch of stuff here. You can do a right click, reset, and it's back to reset. Probably in proxy mode. Yes, proxy on. Yeah, very cool. Very cool rig. I'm a big fan. Now, as someone has asked me, if I grab this guy, let's try something here. All right, I did the world's worst jump. <laughs> but you can see here on the lower right, the FPS stays at 24. Someone asked me to do a little bit of movement. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> but I like this idea. I just want to make sure that I can do rig reviews and not spend a huge amount of time. Because, you know, the moment I start with something, it's going to get very time consuming where I start doing silly silly things silly things where i don't want to stop right away so maybe we do something like that like that spline this for some offset it's not so super crappy yeah but it seems fairly fast i mean that's all i did root and i did um the feet so if i go like that and maybe i change this and you can see it is off screen. I'm splining everything horribly. Go out into like that. And maybe I'm already doing this into that, into that. And the land will be here down with a stronger down and a really poppy up and then forward. I don't know what that gives me. Spline everything. <laughs> I don't know if I had any. I haven't even used the graph editor. Okay. Let's move it forward. So horrible. It's almost like shame kicks in and I can't I can't just leave it. Set another key over there. So if I do this here, and then I set a key here, and maybe the character wants to go forward. Okay, interesting. 
and then goes up into a bit of a stretch into that and then here I'm really stretching into this and then boom squashes get some deformation in there and then here to back to zero the world's most horrible jump actually do this here okay <laughs> it does something i'm really not looking for animation quality here but i'm gonna go what if i use both neck controllers can i do this yes i can I just want to add some more. So I go down here. Maybe the character wants to look down first into this and then wants to look up into really checking where things are. And then at this point looks down though into this. Boom, and then you got that compression with a little bit of overlap and there's not enough frames. Let's spline this. You can't see this. I'm just randomly setting keys and splining things. Right? Rejoin, join, join. It's so bad. I love it. Hold on. I can't stop. If you're watching this, here's your real time crappy animation. Let me just test one more thing. Oh, that's cool. Sometimes when you select both controllers and they go up and down, they are offset. Like one goes up, one goes down. So that's actually really cool to see. Big fan of that. I'm not moving the shoulders just yet actually if i look at this it does not have auto clavicle does it have here something in there no that'd be cool to add to i'm a big fan of auto clavicles as well I, I, with a an option to change it of course on off and, and the percentage and everything so if i go back here and i go show and at this point it's really wanting to go forward let me see it's good rotation forward too and then does this. I should probably rotate out at this point, huh? I'll do that later. Lands, what should I do? It goes up. And at this point, would it go back down to the side? Let me try it. And then whew, goes forward with a swing and then back to this. It's absolutely horrendous. Maybe that should be a new thing. How to do horrendous animation. Forward and then as it goes here, let me see what that rotation does. Oh, it goes out like that. That's cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. Let's go out to this. Maybe on that and it goes out and then out like that and then back down. This is so horrendous. At this point, everybody has stopped watching. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, it's so bad. I love it. So bad. Hold on. Let me go back here. Reselect my arms. It's this that I can't, I can't, I can't abide by this. What if I do something more like that? It goes out. Ooh, it's a gimbal. Great. How about this here? It's not even splined. Spline this whole thing. And then do curve Euler filter. Let me see. How about that? Okay. Boom. On this, I want a bigger one. Like, why am I even animating this? This is a rig review. But listen, people wanted to see how this works in terms of speed. No, I mean, not extend the frames. This is horrendous here. I'm at 37, by the way, just in case you want to see this here. There you go. But look at the FPS. It's holding steady. Fairly 24. Big fan. Already a big fan. I mean, not a fan of my animation though, but uh, let's see here. Curbs off, nerps curbs off. You can rotate around. You can see what the rig is doing. Oh, the non offset, that one axis aspect of my legs is really bugging me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's nice. I really like this. I think next time I'm gonna do this as well, but I'm not gonna record the actual animation. I'm just gonna animate something crappy and then unhit or hit the pause or on hit pause just go back to recording i guess i think that's very cool i'm a big big fan of this rig so let's go back and just do a pose for my thumbnail so during this pose there are a couple of things i noticed here so this one just to go back to this if you do this it gives you also the spreading there and one thing i did not mention here you have these here where you can rotate all of this 
and then you have this one that translates all of this. Because I was wondering, wait a minute, is there like automated thing for Blink? But there is, right? You got this right there. You have the blending of this and also auto lids. So when you move this around, it changes your information on the lid. So basically if I take this down and I grab this here, auto lids, you can see the change right there. So I was wondering, this rig is already so detailed. That's weird that that's not in there. It's totally there. So you can also scale if you want. You can change that. Absolutely. So that's a big thing I missed. Just making sure that everybody sees that that is there. So yeah, that's it for my character. I have this in this pose. If I hit play, it would jump. Watch this. And jump. <laughs> yeah, I switched it to uh, IK. That's why this is happening. Anyway, it's cool. I like it. It's a really cool rig. Big fan. I love that the speed is still there. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah, thanks for watching. Any rigs, as always, let me know. Comment, email me, any concerns, questions, anything like that. And check out the rig on all the sites I have in the description. The links are all there. And that is it. Thank you for watching. And until next time.